Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to build a unique fireworks factory that can also double as a fireworks launcher. This factory can produce a bunch of different types of fireworks, of uh, different shapes, effects to the fireworks, different colors, different uh, breaks and break numbers, and it can also produce some fairly advanced fireworks like these up here, uh, which have a lot of different fades and effects and shapes in them. Uh, it can also double as a fireworks launcher, which you'll see right here as it shoots off some different uh, types of fireworks. Uh, it usually has three in a row that are the same, and then the fourth one will switch it up. So this one will be a different one, as you can see. So yeah, lots of different variety of fireworks and shapes and sizes and colors, and also a launcher built in. Plus, I want to bring some attention to a fireworks bug that currently exists in multiplayer, so please stick around for that. But without further ado, let's get into the tutorial for the factory first. And then we'll talk about the launcher and the bug. And by the way, all the materials you need for this factory will be in the description below. All right, everybody, fireworks factory, let's do it. First thing we're gonna do is place down our double chest where our fireworks are going to end up after they're crafted. We're gonna break into our wall where we're gonna have our fireworks factory back here. And we wanna place eight hoppers into the back of this chest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then on top of this bottom or backmost hopper, place down a barrel. We now want a crafter facing downward on this. So we're gonna get into position for that. So there we go, crafter facing downward. Uh, then we need two crafters facing into this crafter. So we're gonna have two temporary blocks here and then one, two crafters facing into that crafter right there. Now we need to get some hoppers in here to transport items into those crafters. So five hoppers out like this. I have two hoppers like this, and then six hoppers all leading into the leftmost crafter. Fantastic. Now we need our droppers out, so let's just place these down. Place six droppers into the hoppers we just placed. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six right there. Very good. And then we need two on this side, so one, two. And then we need an additional four on this side. So there's one, two three and four and get rid of that last one on the end very good okay so uh, now that we have this this is sort of the uh, layout of the system now we need to start to put down some redstone to actually activate it so to do that we're going to grab some uh, copper bulbs and a button and we're going to come to our firework chest from this we're going to go left three blocks so one two three and then up two from our floor break that block, place down a copper bulb and a button. You can also use a lever on this block, but I like the copper bulb because it lights up, showing you that fireworks are being crafted. Uh, so then we come to the back side here. I'm gonna place down a block here. Redstone comparator on subtract mode there. Now we need to make a small clock, so we'll place down a few blocks like this. Redstone repeater on four ticks, redstone repeater on four ticks there. Two dust, and then two more repeaters on four ticks each. The dust right there, so now we can hit this button and that should light up like that and form a small clock, as you can see. Redstone lights up, and then it turns off, lights up and turns off, etc. Fantastic. So now we continue. We're going to come out here a few more blocks. And we're going to place down redstone dust here, 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 and here. Repeater here on one tick. Then we need a comparator. Redstone dust. Then a repeater. And that's going to go into a block with dust on it. So now... We should see that redstone dust pulse very quickly whenever we activate our clock. So it pulses on, turns off, pulse on, turns off, just like that. So very quickly like, like so. So make sure that happens for you, whether you're using this uh, copper bulb and button setup or a lever. Now we're going to hook up uh, the droppers and the crafters to the redstone. So to do that, we're gonna have this come up like this, this come over, and then three blocks over like that. Put dust on top of all these and on top of all six droppers on this side, as well as this crafter here. And you'll need a solid block on top of the middle crafter right there. Now what we'll do is we'll come over to this rightmost crafter, place a block here. We want a comparator right here. Block here, comparator into that comparator. Another block and then a crafter. Now this crafter you want to open up and you want to disable every single slot in this crafter just like that. Then we'll take a block out here, block up here, 
place a block over this comparator here next to the crafter and then one next to this uh, hopper right here. We want to place dust, 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 and dust like that. Repeater here and then dust across these droppers as well. And that is your redstone segments completed. So this is the core of your system, and yeah, this can handle any single break firework, as well as it can randomly produce different multi-break fireworks, depending on what you input, um, or the same multi-break firework, depending on what you input. However, we want a system that can handle like up to three breaks of the exact same type every single time. So to do that, we're going to have two hoppers facing into the crafter here. Then we need two crafters facing into the topmost hopper, just like that. Then, in a mirror of the bottom part, we're going to have two hoppers into that crafter there. We're going to have six hoppers into that crafter right there. Then we bring out the droppers, and you guessed it, six droppers facing into the hoppers on this side. And then two over here on this side. So one and two. Now we need to bring up the signal to activate these droppers and crafters on this level. So we're going to get out some slabs and come over here. Then we're going to go up here like this and then up to this level here. So we're going to make like a little stair step pattern up like this. Uh, next, we're going to have dust on all these and then solid blocks across here. Then dust on those solid blocks and all the droppers here. And then don't forget on top of this crafter, dust and then a solid block on top of that crafter right there. So that gives us the ability to make two different types of breaks. Now let's do the third one. So same as the last layer, we go up to with our hoppers. Next, we need some crafters. So one, two facing that way. Then around the back side, two hoppers here and six across like that. Then we need our droppers out. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then on this side, we have one, two. Then we have to continue this redstone staircase up. So let's just do like this, up like that. And then we'll do up like this. And once we have that, we have dust here and here, blocks across the back like this, redstone dust on top of those and on top of all the droppers here. And then don't forget the redstone on top of the crafter and the block on top of the crafter as well. So at this point, we're almost done. I would add a couple more things that are useful to have. So this first dropper here, this is going to be our gunpowder dropper. So I would suggest adding on top or on the back of all these first droppers, a hopper and then a double chest that will contain your gunpowder, just like that. And then on this side, I would do the same thing. So we'll just have, let's say a hopper here hopper here and then this time let's just go ahead and go with the barrels right so barrel here and barrel here this first barrel is going to be for gunpowder the second one is going to be for paper so yeah that's that and now you can just go ahead and fill in your wall here again uh, because this thing is functionally complete let me show you how to fill it up uh, depending on what type of firework you want to make okay so the first scenario is let's say we wanted to make a variety of Red, white, and blue fireworks. Those are red fireworks, white fireworks, and blue fireworks that were, let's say, flight duration one and uh, just had a twinkle to them, let's say. So in that case, what we would do is we would fill up gunpowder into this bottom chest. So we'll fill up this gunpowder in here. That'll all filter down into the first dropper here. Fill up gunpowder into this first barrel, so just like that, and that all filters down into the first dropper here. Then fill in paper into this one right here, like so, so that all filters down into the second dropper over here. So since we want a flight duration one, uh, that's all we need here. If we wanted flight duration two or three, we'd add in additional gunpowder into this dropper and or this dropper if we wanted two or three. Uh, so then, let's say we want a variety of fireworks. So let's say we want red, white, and blue, or red, blue, and white, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, the dropper will randomly select one color uh, from this dropper and yeah, turn it into that firework, basically. Uh, then we want it to twinkle, so we'll add in glowstone dust. Uh, and we want to put in the same amount of glowstone dust as we have dyes here. Uh, so that will, it'll basically stop producing fireworks whenever... 
Um, we've run out of materials, and that happens at the same time. Uh, so that's great. Uh, then since we have these crafters here, we have to have a fade. Uh, so we have to put in at least one die into this dropper back here. So let's say we put in purple die, and since we know we're going to have single break fireworks of either red, blue, or white color, um, we have to have the same amount of dies in the back here. Uh, and in fact, we actually want one more technically, but uh, you'll see why that is in a moment. Um, so now all we have to worry about is this bottom crafter. So we know that we're going to have a flight duration one rocket. So we're going to have one gunpowder and one paper, and we're going to have one of any of these colors. So that means we're going to have some type of firework star of a various color here. So we want this to craft up whenever this is fulfilled. So we have to disable all six of these other slots here. So basically we just click these like this and now our firework uh, mechanism is set up. You might also know that or realize that these top ones are not being used. That's fine, we'll get to it. Uh, if you're really concerned about that, you can actually just disable them entirely by removing this redstone dust. Um, so that's that. and. We are ready to start crafting now. Uh, so, yeah, we will just go ahead and press the button. And our first firework that's crafted up is actually going to have two purple dies, but every other one will have just one. And uh, you'll see that's the case here. And so we should start seeing there's the one that has the double purple fade, and then every single one past this will just be a combination of blue, white, or red with the exact same... Uh, flight duration, different colors, uh, but all will be fading to purple with a twinkle. So there's the red coming in. So yeah, these three fireworks will now be mass produced until we have uh, basically three stacks of each type. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so let's say instead of a red, white, or blue firework, we wanted a red, white, and blue firework. And we wanted to have a whole bunch of fancy breaks and effects and things like that. How would we do that then? Well, it works kind of the same as what we just did. So obviously we have our gunpowder in here. Fill this chest up uh, to, yeah, basically fill up the first dropper. Then we have our first break here color. So let's make our first break just a simple red ball. Uh, and that's it, basically. Uh, so that's that. And then nothing else is in these other droppers here. Those are just will remain empty. And then again, we come back here, we want to have a fade. You must have a fade here, by the way. Uh, if you don't have a fade, the entire system will break. Uh, except if you don't want any break at all, or any uh, fade at all, you can replace the crafter, just break it, and then place in a, uh, a hopper like this. Uh, but if that is the case, you do not want any uh, fade in here. In our case, we're just going to have a fade to uh, purple. So we're going to put the crafter back, facing that direction. And we're going to make sure we have at least one color in here. You can also have two colors, uh, or three, or four, or five, if you add on to this. Uh, but we're just going to have everything fade to purple for us. Um, so, yeah, this is just the simple one we just had. Red ball fade to purple. But now we are going to add in some more breaks. So we're going to have this dropper filled with gunpowder. So to do that, we just fill in this chest here. Everything should filter down into this one. There's our gunpowder coming in. We're going to make this one a white uh, ball right here. We're going to have a large break, so a large ball. And that is going to also have a trail effect on it. So we'll add those in there. Very good. Uh, and then uh, we also need to remember to put in our uh, color, our fade color, which in our case is going to be the same, purple. But this could be different. You could have this fade to red or yellow or whatever color you want. Uh, or multiple other colors you want. Uh, and then the next break, again, we're going to have gunpowder in the top chest. Have to have gunpowder there, and that'll filter down into the dropper. And then we're going to have blue dye, so it's going to be a blue break here. And we're going to have it be a blue, whoops, blue star, which is the gold nugget right here. Uh, and then we're going to have that, let's have that twinkle, so we'll have some glowstone for our effect which is going to go into here. And then we're also going to, of course, have to have a fade. And this one we're going to fade to purple as well. So everything's just going to fade to purple. Um, so now we have three different breaks set up. And let's say we want this to be a flight duration two as well. So we now know we're going to have flight duration two. So we need 
spots for two gunpowder instead of just one. We also are going to have three brakes. So right now we only have space for one. So we have to change this to have space for three different brakes. Then, since it's flight duration two, uh, we're going to need to fill this dropper with gunpowder. Uh, because when this fires, this one will fire and this one will fire, giving two gunpowder. And of course, the paper also fires, giving the, uh, the paper to the uh, firework ultimately. Um, and then that is, I believe, it. So we are actually ready to start crafting this. Now, one subtle thing with the, this system, the first firework crafted is always going to have two dies. Like it'll fade to two dies. Um, but that's not a problem. It'll self-correct after the first firework is created. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Now we should have, instead of red, white, or blue, just single break, we should have red, white, and blue all together in one firework. So we'll hit the button to start the crafting. And it takes three times now, so it actually takes a little bit longer since we're not doing just one break. But there we go. We heard it click. And now it starts to come in. And you can see we have double purple now. But after this, it should go back to single purple, and it will remain on this uh, indefinitely until you run out of resources. So, yeah, there we have it. Our fireworks now being mass-produced. And so there's quite a difference between these. Um, if I just quickly do this. Uh, so we can show, like, the basic ones that we produced earlier, and then the ones we're producing now. Let's just do that. So the basic ones are just straight up basically just the different colors only whereas this one is much more advanced bigger <laughs> bolder firework with a bunch of different breaks you can see the blue and the red in there as well uh, and so this will now mass produce these fireworks indefinitely until you run out of resources uh, and of course you can always if you are worried about uh, you know resources you can always just add on more hoppers and chests full of things to produce you know, tens of thousands of these per per time, basically. You know, you can bring this out. You can still bring this out, you know, with more chests on top and stuff. So, yeah, pretty versatile in that regard. And, yeah, you can see we have over a stack of those already, which is kind of nice. So the final thing I want to show you is you can easily make a pretty dynamic fireworks show just by modifying this slightly. So the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to remove these top two layers of blocks here. Basically, we're going to remove everything from here over above this level. So we're just going to go ahead and literally just punch everything out here uh, and remove it. We've now gotten rid of the top two layers of the factory. And now from this point, to turn this into a firework launcher is super easy. All we got to do is remove this hopper, this block, and this crafter right here. And we might have some stuff in that. Uh, and this crafter, we're just going to simply turn upwards so it faces upwards instead of downwards. We're going to place a dispenser facing upwards here, and then a hopper on top of this uh, crafter facing into the dispenser like that. Uh, so now, all we need to do is basically decide what firework we want to launch, like what flight duration we want to launch. So I'm going to launch flight duration 1, uh, and what you need to do is just add a 4 to whatever number you pick. So I'm going to do 1 plus 4 is 5, so we need to keep 5 slots enabled which means we need to disable four uh, in our case. So we're going to have a gunpowder, a paper, and then three extra uh, open slots. Now you need to make this three because that ensures that the rate you're launching fireworks from the dispenser matches the rate that you're firing uh, or crafting up fireworks in the crafter. Uh, so just make sure that. So like if you're, if you're doing a flight duration three, then you want to make sure to have seven open slots. Flight duration 2 would be 6 open. Flight duration 1 is 5 open. Uh, like that. So, yeah, do that. And then uh, you just do the same thing you did before. So you fill your gunpowder in here and here. Make sure your paper is filled in this dropper. Uh, we're doing flight duration 1, so we make sure that there's nothing in this dropper or this one. And now we can just make ourselves some fireworks that are cool. So let's say we want a combination of, let's say, all the bright colors. So all the colors of the rainbow. Let's say like this. We'll throw in some cyan, some blue. Let's put some white in there as well. And let's do, let's say I really like the color red, so we'll do two red right here. So we're going to throw all these colors now into this dropper here, like so. And let's say we want a variety of shapes and sizes. So let's get a couple of the shapes things. Let's get some fire charges. 
We'll get some, uh, let's say, feathers for the burst. Let's get some uh, gold nuggets for the star. And we'll get some creeper heads for the creeper-shaped ones. So we'll put some shapes in here. Maybe double up on some ones we really like, like the stars. And some bursts in there as well. And then let's go ahead and do some effects too. We'll get some uh, glowstone for the effects. And let's get some uh, diamonds as well for the trail effects. So let's say we put these in here. So we'll do just a few diamonds and all the rest glowstone. Just like that. Very good. Uh, so now we need our fade effects. So let's get some dyes. And let's say we want these to fade to a combination of, let's say, uh, white and red and yellow and pink, let's just say, as an example. So we'll put in, uh, instead of all the purple, put in white, red, yellow, and pink, just like that. And let's just double these up so we have a little extra in the reserve. There we go. So yeah, basically we've now created a system where it's going to fire off a triple break firework that has some random effect based on what the dropper picks here with some, uh, or sorry, some random shape based on what the dropper picks here, some random effect based on what it picks here, and one of these eight different colors here. Then it will pick one of these... Uh, colors to fade to. Let's actually add purple. It'll add another effect that we, it could fade to. Uh, and it'll make three firework stars with those criteria. Combine them all together. Then craft the firework and then launch the firework out three times in a row so we can see it uh, whenever this is active. So let's just uh, make that happen. Let's just wait here. So there's one. You can see it crafts up the Firework star here. This time it's going to have two for the first round, but then it'll just have one. Uh, so there's our one, two, and once the third one happens, it goes up here. And then the next time this is going to launch, and there we go. There you go. So we'll get three of these fireworks. Get up here and take a look. Kind of cool. Creeper face with the burst. And now we'll have a new firework. There you go. Orange and yellow star with the cyan burst. Pretty cool. There's two, there's three, and now we'll have another one. That's the star in the burst, so no ball that time. Kind of a cool one there. There we have it. And now another new one after the third one. There you go. And it'll just continuously produce new fireworks like this basically forever. And not even you will know what's going to come out. <laughs> Look at that one. That's a nice one. Very cool. So, yeah. Kind of a cool way to convert your factory into a launcher that will just continuously produce new fireworks as long as you have the materials to support it. So ladies and gentlemen, the final thing I want to do is bring to attention, your attention, a bug, which is, in my opinion, pretty bad, that has been in the game for quite some time, and I think is sort of a relic of past coding, uh, which is no longer really necessary. So here I have a dispenser filled with flight duration three large red explosive rockets. And we're just going to come over here to a point that is about 60 blocks away from that dispenser. We're going to launch uh, that firework. And as expected, a big red ball appears in the sky, right? Nothing wrong here. This is exactly how it should work in Minecraft when fireworks explode. But I'm actually on a server right now. And if I were to, say, pass this red line that happens to be 64 blocks horizontally from that dispenser and then shoot the firework here, shoot it off here, what happens? Nothing! Incredible, huh? Just absolutely amazing. And now the crazy thing is, is that the firework is actually being launched and does actually explode, but we just can't see it because there's a bug in the game where if you're on a multiplayer server... Only in Java Edition, by the way. This works fine in Java Edition single player, works fine edition in works fine in Bedrock single player and in multiplayer on Bedrock. But just only in Java multiplayer can you not see firework explosions uh, if you're more than 64 blocks away. Which is insane, considering if I just move a couple blocks up, now I will be able to see the explosion. 
It's like, what? <laughs> Come on now. But wait, it gets even worse. If we say, shoot a firework rocket from a crossbow that has flight duration 3, what happens if we have that firework get more than 64 blocks away from the player? I don't know, let's see. Wow, amazing! Absolutely nothing happened, because we're too far away from the firework to see the explosion. That is, we can actually shoot off a firework ourselves from our crossbow, and the firework will end up being too far away when it explodes for us to actually see it explode. That is absolutely insane. Sometimes you can get lucky and see it, but usually with these flight duration threes, the firework is just simply deleted, which makes no sense. Especially considering I'm the one that fired it, I should be able to see it explode, you would think. Uh, it is exploding, by the way, within my render distance. If I shoot this, you'll see. Yeah, it is actually exploding within render distance. Uh, and sometimes, if I shoot off a bunch of these, we'll be able to see. Yeah, that one we were able to see because it was within 64 blocks, but that is not actually always the case. Like, that one just... What happened? Like, come on. What is this, Mojang? Please fix. And please, guys, go and upvote the bug on the bug tracker. This is a pretty serious bug, in my opinion, uh, which should be fixed, in my opinion, as soon as possible. Uh, again, this only happens on multiplayer servers. It doesn't affect single player, but dang, it's bad on multiplayer. So yeah, upvote this bug on the bug tracker. Kind of a serious bug in that, yeah, it kind of just brace, basically breaks a lot of things, including, yeah, the ability for you to see your own crossbow shots, which is crazy. But yeah, up with the bug and the bug tracker. Hopefully we can get this fixed in the next version of Minecraft. Until then though, guys, that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.